Hey Don. Hi Shirley. What are you up to? Uh, marking out my placement for the holes. So what's going to happen is I'm going to stitch these scales after they're painted to this back cloth so that on the inside it'll look like this. My scales will be on the cloth part. But what needs to happen is they need to be stitched now. So what I'm doing is if you come right up on top here, see these marks? Each one of them is for one of these top holes. So I'm marking them out so I can get ready then to pierce them with an awl and then uh, get ready to stitch them to the back cloth after I've painted them. Alright, so here I've set my gauge. That gauge is equivalent to the center of the center of both holes. So that hole is marked here, and the center of that hole, and that's my spacing for for each one. Hey Don. Hi, Shreve. What are you up to? Uh, getting ready to stitch my horizontal threads here. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is get my needle and thread ready. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by stitching this row first and I'm going to stitch all them down in my horizontals first so when I say horizontals first these stitches that are going to go across so the next the next plate is going to sit on top and I'm see that these are horizontal stitches. These, these horizontal stitches will end up forming a row of scales. But it's not just this one. It's then after that, I've got my other string cut, okay, which is then going to be used to stitch the horizontal up at the top, and that will form a row, okay. What happens then? is I'm left with one, two, and three holes. So these top holes will then be used to stitch them down to a backing. Uh, so if you want, come with me. Here, what you can see is I've stitched it down uh, through a broken stitch pattern in, out, in, out, through each hole. But the point of me doing that first row, you can see this is where I want it to end. So here I'm trying to figure out exactly how many scales I need. So you can see I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that. Even this one I don't need because if you can see the my line and where this scale ends, so one, two, three, four, five, that's a total of 61 scales I calculated in, in each row and I'm gonna have to stitch each row on top on top of the other one in in that fashion. Hey John. How show me? What are you doing? I'm uh, doing some cross stitching on my scale armor. So yeah. I'm just giving you an idea of what's what's involved when I'm actually stitching them down. So. Yeah, now that, that needs to go in there, so you can, you can get an idea. So now what I'm doing is I'm feeling it uh, to, to see if the actual scale is sitting in the correct position, because what I have done is I've actually Im imbricated the scales, which means they're offset. So if you come down to, to this end, you can see that this row of scales above it is actually is actually uh, to to the left, uh, and and that makes the the ridge that ridge that mid ridge that mid rib actually in line with where uh, the the curve of the scales sits. So before I actually do that stitching, you can see here that I've, uh, I've done my cross lacing, uh, sorry, my horizontal stitches 
So my horizontal stitches and then stuck, uh, stitched it actually down to the back cloth. And that leaves you with, with this type of this type of effect. You can see what's what's going on with the with the scales here. See see how you can lift them up. So imagine if if I left them like this. If I if I left them like this, what would happen is uh, it would be possible in battle to be able to cop a blade to to go under here because uh, you've got you've got space. So that cross lacing. Here locks. I can't get. Show my hand. I can't get under under the scales anymore. So that's a function of the cross lacing. Yet, watch this. I still have. I still have the ability to be able to slide slide the scales uh, past past each other. So that top row always goes slides past the bottom row, and the next row that would sit on top the same thing would happen. But you can see here, <clears throat> I've stitched the, that hole, the top, that hole there is equivalent to that hole. So that hole to the bottom of, of this one. And that's how you get your cross lacing. Now what I'm doing is giving you a pattern that's, that's actually identical to uh, King, Tut's, King Tut's cross lacing system in that it goes over under, you see here, over, under, over, under, etc, etc. So it's continuous, and all I'm doing is just figure eights. So come back, come back to this section. You can see how I've passed that thread. Okay, so, so now I've got to go back, back through that hole. Okay, and now I'm gonna pass it across here, and I'm closing closing the the row off as I go. So now you're thinking, okay, how am I gonna get the needle under there? Well, this is where this is where you have the ability to pull your to pull your scales forward to enough to to get to that actual uh, row. And now, when, see, that helps, that helps adjust. So you can see why they're doing the crisscross, because if you do it one way, continuously, it'll, it'll end up slanting the angle of the scales while you're stitching them up, whereas this way allows me to, to recorrect and straighten them out again. And you're just going around uh, like that continuously all the way till you get to the end so this is what my next project will be that I'm currently working on what is